Aston Brown will start on pole position with Harry Neesom alongside Riley Buckton Young and Toby Dukes on row two. Alex Jones and Logan Lauder on row number three. Jack Hutchinson starts alongside James Tate, who won the last race but retired from the previous one, which sees him down starting in eighth in front of Caden Simpson, who has shown good pace today, but unfortunately fell foul of a technical scrutineering earlier, which saw him lose all of his points from the second heat in which he finished in second place. So, unfortunate for him. Just having a quick look out there. It looks like potentially Aston Brown. Just look at that car there. Looks like that might have had an engine change after the issues he had in the previous one. I know they were looking at various issues. Looks like they were, they were changing the spark plug. Then they had a quick look at the battery. Looks like that hasn't. they haven't managed to find a quick solution to that. So they've just taken the, the, the entire engine off and replaced it. Although there are a few of them actually finding a way onto the grass. Looks like Brown went on there and Riley Buckton Young as well is off onto the grass. It took him a while actually to get back into position as uh, we break away from some cart action to uh, do some plane spotting here at Fullbeck. Looks like one of our, uh, doesn't take much to, uh, to sway the camera guys here at Alpha Live away from the karting action. So if they hear the sound of a plane, they will spin the camera around and up into the air. It's not the first time we've, uh, we've gone plane spotting at certain venues around the country. We, we do a fair bit of that actually, and we'll see a few more at the end of the year at Ella Park, because there's a parachute place just over the road from there. So we see plenty of planes going over for that one. We don't quite get the camera to zoom in far enough to see people jumping out of them which would uh, provide plenty of entertainment during the downtime between races. But uh, nonetheless, Micro Max are out. Riley Buckton Young is going to retake his position on the second row. He's managed to get back from his excursion onto the grass on the outlap. And uh, the first main final of the day here at the opening round of the Cadet Kart and Junior Kart Championship here from CKC is underway. We're away and racing. It's a good run then down and Harry Neeson's got a good run on Aston Brown. There's contact between the two of them and Brown almost gets fired off onto the inside at Riley Buckton Young but they all live to fight another corner at the very least and Buckton Young is going to try and get, take advantage of Harry Neeson and trying to get alongside there into the chicane section. We know how difficult Neeson is to overtake. We've seen that in the previous heat where he Managed to keep almost the entire field behind him in that 47 machine. Parking it superbly in the middle of the track. Out at the front though, Aston Brown bolted already off into the distance. Let's see whether James Tate, who did incredibly well in the previous race to stick with him, can come through the pack early enough to try and stick with Aston Brown. But it looks like he's gone. Riley Buckton Young gets alongside Harry Neeson. A little bit of bump and run and Neeson off onto the grass and round for Harry Neeson. Forced onto the grass by Riley Buckton Young and he's going to go all the way down into ninth place. Hutchinson comes around the outside of him. Both hands off the wheel for Neeson. Disappointment, he's on the grass. Riley Buckton Young got alongside, left him no space at all, ran him all the way out. Neeson kept his foot in as well and that was always going to end with one of them facing the wrong way. Unfortunately, it was Neeson all the way down into P9 now. Damage limitation now for the 47. He's got to try and catch back up and hope that the pack in front continues to battle and just backs themselves into him. But the gap back is going to be around about seven or eight seconds. Warning then for Riley Buckton Young. Not sure whether that's just going to be a, a slap on the wrist or whether that's going to be a time penalty incurred for him. But we'll check that one out throughout the rest of the uh, rest of the race and see whether that one pops up on timing later on as we look for any potential uh, issues in these finals that may play a part certainly in the top three when it comes to uh, handing out the silverware at the end of the day the top as it stands though brown leading the way from buckton young lauder in third tate up fourth jones dukes simpson neeson and hutchinson then the top nine as neeson starts to try and make his way back onto the back of this battle there's your leader already coming through aston brown whatever problems he had in the previous heat i don't know whether the engine changes sorted it Certainly, it's found a, uh, a much sweeter spot for that cart because they tried the plug, they tried the battery, and after that, it is pretty much a case of just swapping the, the entire power unit on that. It doesn't take too long, actually. A couple of bolts, get them off. They didn't have a huge amount of time, actually, for our Micro Max. They only had the Junior Max heat. The, uh, one of the guest races, as Tate comes through on Riley Buckton Young, and then the B final in Honda. So they only had about 20 minutes to get that engine changed 
Real good uh, work there from Team Brown to get that sorted as Riley Buckton Young may be giving up third place as well to Logan Lauder. James Tate has, has come through, but by the time he's made his way through from eighth place up to second, the race leader is already seven seconds away down the road. And it's going to take a miracle for James Tate to reel that one in. It's going to either be a second a lap that he's going to reel it in, or it's going to have to be a problem for Aston Brown. We don't wish that upon anybody, but I'm sure that's what James Tate is hoping for because Aston Brown, seven seconds down the road at the moment, as uh, Tate has managed to break away from this battle for the final step on the podium here. Round one of CKC. It's the Micromax class, the first time they've raced with us on a full season basis, having guested around last year. They're with us for the full season, so if you've got a Micromax, come and join the party. Some fantastic racing so far, which has seen Aston Brown take two race victories, a second in a race he had some problems with. James Tate took full advantage of that, and now he is off on his way, continuing to pull out the lead, the fastest lap of the race as Logan Lauder goes to the inside and up onto the provisional final step of the podium at the expense of Riley Buckton Young with a great overtake down there into the turn one hairpin and Buckton Young may even lose fourth place if he doesn't, if he's not careful. Alex Jones carries a good bit of speed and maybe a little bit of contact there on exit as well as Jones tries to get alongside Buckton Young. Hopefully no penalties applied because it doesn't matter where you finish. If you're not five seconds away and you pick up a penalty, that is a problem. The driver off there in the tyres, actually. Let's see if we can figure out who that is. That's down at the first corner. The yellow flag is out as Aston Brown comes through. Looks like it could be Jack Hutchinson. It is. So Hutchinson goes off. The yellow flags were out. Now they're back in again. So Aston Brown may have had to slow down, although he still managed to set a 51. So this will be the lap he comes through. That He might be a little bit slower because he's had to slow down because of that yellow flag. And he's going through past some lap traffic as well in Hutchinson down there as he goes into the second chicane. Riley Buckton Young trying to hold off Alex Jones. Alex Jones right on the back of Buckton Young, but Buckton Young has dropped away from Logan Lauder in third place. And Buckton Young looks like he's struggling actually on entry into that corner as Caden Simpson makes a late dive to the inside of Alex Jones. That might balk his own exit to Toby, as Cho Toby Dukes tries to get on the back of Caden Simpson. It's still nose to tail from fourth down into seventh place in this Mini in this micro max final, and now Buckton Young and Alex Jones are side by side. And Jones gets the run and goes right the way around the outside of Buckton Young up into fourth place. And the gap 1.5 seconds to Logan Lauder in front. Now, can Alex Jones start to reel in Logan Lauder, or will he be fall back once again? Then into the clutches, Riley Buckton Young held third place as Caden Simpson gets a good run alongside. They're going to be side by side, although Simpson will be on the outside. He's going to have to be very brave, and he is right the way around the outside of Riley Buckton Young. You don't see that move very often, but when you do here at Fullbeck, it looks absolutely sensational. All the way around the outside, it takes bravery, it takes skill, and Caden Simpson gets the 77 stopped and moves up into fifth place as Aston Brown sets the fastest lap of the race once again a 51 188 out in the lead at the moment eight and a half seconds almost from james tate in fact he made almost two seconds on that previous lap to go up to 10 seconds james tate slowing slightly as the battle we really want to look for now is that lauder is starting to close in on james tate james tate a lot slower on that previous lap toby jukes tries to make a move down the inside of riley buckton young and will do so. We can't get alongside in the same way that Simpson did. And we look now, the battle for second place. Logan Lauder already on the podium and moving away from Alex Jones behind. But not just moving away, but also moving closer to James Tate in second place. Nine tenths was the difference when they came over the line last time. And Logan Lauder certainly has a target in front of him to look for. James Tate with not, not the same sort of luxury with Aston Brown being a lot further down the road. The gap was nine tenths. Let's see when they come over the line this time. It's actually gone out to 1.5. Tate's managed to stem the tide and in doing so, it's the fastest lap of the race. A 51.096 as Riley Buckton Young holds off Toby Dukes. Dukes trying left and right but can't get alongside Buckton Young. Two minutes and 45 seconds remaining then in this Micro Max final here at Fullbeck as we uh, head towards the first trophies of the day then. Also, points are on the game. It's a championship, of course. You don't, uh, you don't win championships at round one, but you can certainly put yourself 
in the right position to do so. Obviously, we run a drop, a drop score provision, so it's not all over. It's not quite like Formula One, where every points from every race counts. You are allowed a drop. So if you're not able to make a round or something like that, and, uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. So drivers that make every single race, they might not be able to, uh, they might not score some of the points that they wanted. They'll just drop their lowest score. Drivers that can't make a round and score zero won't matter quite so much, but then all the rounds that they do attend will count towards their championship. And uh, one driver who's certainly starting the season in the correct way is Aston Brown. He's out at the front with a gap of 10 seconds, having won two heats already and looked like he was on course for a clean sweep of victories here at Fullbeck in the opening round of CKC. Missed out, though, in heat number three to James Tate, but now comfortable out in the lead. And looks like he's still working incredibly hard. Looking at him just out the com box window. He's bouncing over the curb still. Risky strategy, but he's still he's got plenty of cushion. Back to James Tate as Logan Lauder, Alex Jones and Caden Simpson all set their fastest laps, their personal bests in this evening. Sunshine now here at Fullbeck. The sun starting to come down a little bit more and this is going to be a bit difficult later on for some of the drivers and it is over to the left hand side of the circuit but as they come down towards this braking zone now the later we go in today the lower that sun's going to come the harder it's going to be for our drivers to be able to see their apexes hit, hit their braking points non so much of a problem though for Aston Brown he's going to get two more laps at this one with 36 seconds remaining 50 0.839, once again the fastest lap of the race for Aston Brown. Continuing to push despite having an unassailable lead at the moment. Doesn't want to throw it away though as James Tate slides the 20 round. He's still pushing, has a look over his shoulder, sees the gap, feels some comfort back to Logan Lauder who has a similar gap back to Caden Simpson who, similar to James Tate, has had to come through the field and potentially with if he hadn't have had that uh, technical infringement in heat number two could have been a lot higher up the field because he wouldn't have had to start so far down in this heat down in uh, in ninth place right the way down the tail end of the field in this final but now is up into fourth still coming under pressure though from Alex Jones there in the background for fourth and fifth respectively with the Buckton Young Dukes Neeson some 36 seconds off the lead after that incident on the opening lap which saw him facing the wrong way out at the front though the leader Aston Brown up into the second chicane gets the cart stopped in there still bouncing over them curbs here at fullback we know that that's the quickest route although on the last lap of the race doesn't want to do anything silly and throw it away has been continually setting fastest laps throughout this race now really just enjoying himself and he's going to enjoy the final half a lap of this fullback circuit in Lincolnshire. Round the final right, round the final left. The first final of CKC 2022 is won by the 57 of Aston Brown.